It is always beautiful to observe an in-your-face moment on the internet. What are we talking about? Let's find out. Where's hi everybody and welcome to it another video. Is it not beautiful when a psycho goes to the internet all self-important and tries to virtue signal and be all wokey-wokey and stuff? And then the original creator of the original thing that the wacko is talking about steps in and says... Well, no, actually, it's the, quite the opposite. <laughs> well, if you've been following my channel for quite some time, my dear friends, you know that uh, the scope of my passions is very wide indeed. And one of the things that I have been enjoying my entire life is uh, the American comic books about superheroes, namely the DC Comics, and Batman is obviously one of my favorite ones. Um, there is even an interview on my channel uh, with Chuck Dixon, one of the co-creators of uh, the character in question, Bane, although the interview mainly focused on the adaptation of The Hobbit into the graphic novel format, which uh, Chuck Dixon did. And uh, the other co-creator is Graham Nolan, the illustrator of the Batman run from the 90s that uh, Chuck Dixon was writing. A run, for those of you who don't know, of a comic book series is, uh, well, basically a series series of consecutive, more or less, issues, single issues, periodicals, when uh, it's written and drawn by uh, the same team or even one person, but usually it's one writer and one illustrator, two illustrators, that sometimes somebody steps in to um, fill in an issue if the original first artist hasn't got enough time, but this is not important. The important um, thing is that uh, somebody has gone to the internet and wrote something very crazy about the character of Bane that a lot of people know, especially thanks to the film adaptations like uh, Nolan's uh, The Dark Knight Rises, and the original creator stepped in. So let us dive into the article by bounding into comics and uh, let us get to know all about it because uh, it uh, gave me a, a, a good chuckle. So Bane creator Graham Nolan reacts to Blue Beetle director claiming the character represents American interventionism in Latin America. Now, I should also preface this by saying, yeah, I forgot it was uh, the Blue Beetle director because nobody really cares about the Blue Beetle. Now, it's it, it has always been like a Z-grade DC Comics character. Not even the hardcore DC Comics fans care about Blue Beetle. And, uh, I mean, yeah, there are some, but, I mean, it's like two people, full stop. And secondly, yeah, it's, it's about American interventionism. I don't really care about American politics or anything like that. I, I was just happy that um, Graham Nolan was like, in your face! All right, then, so let us continue. Uh, Bane creator Graham Nolan recently shared his thoughts in regards to Blue Beetle director Angel Manuel Soto claiming that the DC villain represents American in interventionism in Latin America. In a recent interview with The Playlist, Soto shared his thoughts on Bane while promoting the upcoming Blue Beetle film and detailing that DC pitched him on Blue Beetle after he came to them with a Bane movie. Oh, Jesus. Um, Soto shared, as far as Bane goes, the comics that are about Bane's story, it felt like uh, he's very misunderstood like Carpax in, in the movie. He's a product of his environment and that history has been buried. The history of the Caribbean, the Antilles. Uh, it's a history that uh, brushed off in history books. Well, actually, yes. Uh, the One of the most uh, known things about the character of Bane is, of course, that um, he was born and raised on an island in a prison and that uh, he is a Latino character. But he was really not shaped by these uh, historical 
circumstances, nor was he really uh, shaped by his historical and cultural historical heritage. Uh, the problem about Bain is that uh, he did grow up in a prison like that, in seclusion, and uh, that the, the conditions there were very, very rough, and that uh, he became addicted to the venom, which is like, uh, for those of you who have read the comics, you know that it is some kind of a, a strange mixture and elixir of steroids and sci-fi enhancement uh, potions that uh, makes him super strong uh, but other than that the original Bane from the comics was also of uh, a very big intellect unlike the Bane in uh, Batman and Robin movie where he was basically just uh, an idiotic Frankenstein monster like character well it was really unfair towards the original Frankenstein's monster from the novel by Mary Shelley because he was also intelligent so yeah, scrap that. But let us continue. So for me, it was very important to be seen. Ah, there we go. This is this is what we are talking about here all the time and every in every case today. Each and every time somebody opens their mouths, like an actor, a director, a screenwriter, whoever, an activist. Well, they're all activists, so it's like an umbrella term. It's like, I just want to be seen. Yeah, I mean, do you really want to be represented by a villain like Bane? I don't know. I just, I don't know. He continued. And with the character of Bane, the formation of this villain, I think, is in his own right, he's also a hero in his story. So whether whatever happens in the, at the end that uh, might have gotten distorted because of what was done to him, I think that what he represents is a lot of the unknown or forgotten or brushed under the rag history of interventionism in Latin America and the Caribbean. Later, Soto went on to reveal he took his view from Bane's backstory and applied it to Carpax. He then explained why he believes having this part of a villain backstory is so important. Because we need it. Do we? Do we, though? And when we are introduced to the world in movies, right, where we are seen as villains is just given that we are born that way. All right. And when we talk about the history of Latin America, nobody dares to question, well, what happened before? Okay, well, what would happen before? More times than none when you go back, even before 1954. Uh, but if we want to go to 1954 in Guatemala, it was uh, U.S. interventionism that drove these places to the miseries that they're in, he said. And how did you get there from the character of Bane, who released all the villains from Arkham Asylum and uh, the Blackgate Prison to attack Batman... So he weakens Batman more and more and more, and that he could achieve the ultimate victory over Batman by breaking his back, which is one of the most important and significant DC Comics events of the 1990s, along with the death of Superman. All right, I guess uh, uh, extremism will always find its way. So I'm not embarrassed to talk about it. Soto asserted, history is there. Nobody's trying to blame something. Nobody's trying to say it's just like, hear us out. This is our story, and you know what? We can heal together. At the end of the day, we can all heal together if we recognize uh, the stuff that has happened in the past and lift each other up in a way that I feel the race family lifts each other up. It's like, welcome to our stories in the same way that we're welcome to all the stories. Welcome to our stories and let's have a dialogue. It's beautiful, he concluded. I thank all the gods in the the Norse and Slavic and Celtic pantheon that he, in the end, is not making the Bane movie. <laughs> All right, then. Nolan shared his brief thoughts on Soto's comments on Twitter. First, Nolan reacted to comic book writer and editor Aaron Sparrow's comments, simply writing, Well, that's a lot of horse shit. Yes, I do agree, Graham Nolan. By, and by the, by the way, uh, Aaron Sparrow is a great bloke too. He is very often appearing on uh, Thinking Critical's uh, videos. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's he's, he's a cool guy, very wholesome guy to listen to. So I do recommend you go check out um, Thinking Critical's channel where Aaron Sparrow appears very often. Nolan last worked on Bane alongside the... Um, character's fellow co-creator Chuck Dixon in Bane Conquest, which was published back in 2018. 
And uh, yeah, before that, there is a response uh, that, you know, is an elaboration of this horseshit comment uh, that Graham Nolan wrote. And he wrote, too much personal projection. He's correct in that Bain is a product of his in- environment, but the socio-political extrapolations he's making were never considered during Bain's creation, which is basically what I have described lengthily in this video. And then there is some more promotion that uh, about uh, what uh, Graham Nolan is doing right now, which I do suggest you go and check out. All right, then, let me know in the comments down below what you think, and if you like the character of Bane, if you have read the 90s run on Batman by Chuck Dixon, Graham Nolan, I do very much recommend that, along with uh, the plethora of all the books that they uh, wrote and drew. And that will be all. Thank you very much for watching. And I'm out of here.